Max said, give him Andre Iguodala over Steph Curry for the last shot game on the line, Chris. Open shot. Yes. No way. No way. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Steph and Clay, I'd take them one and two, A and B, in the history of the game. Never mind tomorrow night. Dis distant third, but, <laughs> but but I was listening to Stephen A. Clay Thompson, um, how he's underrated. I don't know how that happens. He, he missed the All yes, NBA. All NBA first, be, second, and third team. He should have been second a team. Travis, at, least, at least he should have been second team. A Travis, but, but all time one of the greatest catch and shoot players ever. He's probably to me number one, mm -hmm. right? You mentioned his size, yeah. his ability to catch and shoot, play without uh, without dribbling the basketball. Right. Uh, his dedication and discipline to, to fitness, mm -hmm. right? He just wears people down. Uh, Steph, on the other hand, has just the, the multiple, you know, just the variety of different shots. Playing off the dribble, he can play without the ball. Uh, and that's why this team's so dangerous. The, 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 whatever the game calls for, not only do they have the IQ to make it happen, they have the skill to put it to use. And there's, there's, we haven't seen two players like this complement each other. And, and a run like this, we haven't seen since Bill Russell's Celtics. Do you believe, strange question, because obviously we know how sensational Kevin Durant is. You're the Golden State Warriors in the offseason, and God forbid you find yourself in a situation where you have to prioritize. We know that Clay, as great of a shooter as he is, he's not the all-around player that Kevin Durant is in terms of impact. But what do you do if you're the Golden State Warriors in terms of what you prioritize? Keeping the best player, one of the top three players on the planet, or keeping together the greatest shooting backcourt this game has ever seen? Well, I think they're going to be in a, in a position where they don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But, and I, I listened to you earlier talking about who's the best match for LeBron. Clay can play with anybody in any system, right? And, and the, the way he plays the basketball game is, is, you know, he can play up and down, he can play half court. And the fact that he doesn't have to have the ball to be, uh, to be effective and be, you know, one of the most dynamic scores we've seen, it, it's invaluable, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't think they'll have to make that decision. And look, there's been a lot of talk when KD's out, uh, are they better? Look, they're different. I think Steph said it best. They play well both ways. And, and let's just appreciate how well they've played, not only the last five years, uh, but I think the other thing that's under, underestimated, Steph and Clay, their personalities. They're very welcoming. No matter who wants to come to this team, they're yeah. open to it. Let, let's oh, share that's why the KD, KD wanted to come partly because the way they played the game. Because I want to go back to the open shot thing. Obviously, I'm not arguing Iguodala could shoot it like either one of those guys, or is the offensive player either one of those guys? That, was that a T? But but no, this is this is the truth. There are some guys. For example, you, you a Yankees fan or a Mets fan? Mets fan. Uh, Mets fan. Okay. No. But you, re, you but you recall. Huh? But Nothing. you recall. I'm sorry to hear that. Anyway. Where are you from? Queens. And what are you, a Yankee fan? Yes. Right. Front runner? I wasn't allowed to watch the Mets until I turned 18. That's right. <laughs> Good household. True story. True story. It really should. Why my put your kids through the suffering? My father wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't but, allow it. But, Chris, in the 90s, late 90s, Yankees had a utility infielder, Luis Soho, right? And some years later, they got Alex Rodriguez. Before A-Rod was so juiced up that he couldn't miss the ball, you ask any hardcore Yankees fan, bases loaded, fate of the universe on the line. You want Luis Soho up or A-Rod up? And they tell you Soho. He was better under pressure than A-Rod. Until A-Rod was so juiced up he couldn't miss the ball. I don't mean that guy. I mean when he first got to the Yankees. This is what I'm saying. Wide open shot, not go get your shot. Not just catch and shoot, whatever. So it really comes down to how much ice do you have in your veins, right? I think Iguodala is the coolest customer on the team in terms of clutch factor. I want Iguodala taking that shot. He's not the sh shooter they are. You're alone. Until, until it matters most. I, I, I'd say two things, two things. Andre Iguodala is a finals MVP. Uh -huh. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. You think so? Yes, I do. But let me tell you this. Unlike baseball, the reason he got open was because they doubled yeah, Steph. Yeah, that's thank you. So there's a reason he was thank sitting you. there wide open. I thought it was the right move by Toronto, get yeah. the ball out of Steph's hands. And Andre's done that time and time again, but and you got to play the percentages, right? I'd rather have Andre shooting that shot than Steph for Clay. Let's go back to you with Run TMC, because that was a special time. Watching y'all here in the Bay Area doing y'all thing now. You, you never won a championship here, but I, I, I want you to go back. Take us back to how special that time was, and, and, and what do you think prevented y'all from winning the title? Well, it was, it was a special time, and you see the, the reception that you guys get when you come to Oakland, right? There's no place like it. The fans are the best in the world.
And they've always been like that, through, through thick and thin. The fans have always supported the Warriors. It's, it's one of the great fan bases in all of, of all of sports. Uh, but Mitch, Tim, and myself, we, we had a special bond. We played a fast-paced style. We led the league in scoring. Um, so we had, we had a lot of fun. Um, and I thought we were just coming into our own, and Mitch was traded. That, that's what broke that up. Um, but I tell you what, we have nothing but admiration and respect um, for the way these Warriors play the game. Um, like you said, we got some of the, we got four or five best players of all time on the same team. Uh, and then we're looking at the fifth straight year in the NBA Finals. And not, not the fans in general, but sometimes you just get used to watching them win. Yeah. Stuff that they're doing, don't, us, don't underestimate the journey each and every guy has taken, that the organization has taken to keep players together, to add the right pieces, uh, and then just physical and mental uh, stamina to keep playing into and June. Also, and also the way, like, Steve Kerr deserves, uh, Mark Jackson had him believe in it, and then yep. Steve Kerr took him to the next level. I think of, like, Don Nelson letting you guys play, kind of saying, you got to play fast, right? You guys are only together a couple of years, but people still remember you because of what you did, and that has something to do with the coaching, right? No doubt. I think, like you said, I think it's, it's a great point, Max, that Mark Jackson did a great job, you know, laying the foundation uh, and reorganizing uh, the team. Uh, Steve came in and took it to another level. I love the fact that Steve Kerr honors Mark and gives him the respect for doing the job that he did. Uh, and it's one thing to have, again, I, I mentioned, you know, having the basketball IQ, and, and we have a lot of small plays throughout the league. I think it's underestimated the stamina, physically and mentally, to really get through that grind and get into mid-June each and every year, five years in a row. And no one knows better what that takes than Steve Kerr. So <laughs> I think Steve Kerr's always pushed the right buttons. 10th NBA Finals. Not only in-game uh, adjustments. Yeah.